Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and this Geeks and Gamers video that just dropped. Uh, Disney bringing drag queens to Star Wars. They are going to get so much hate for this, and part of me thinks it's going to be absolutely undeserved, and the other part of me thinks that, no, I, I, I kind of agree with him. Uh, so we're going to go through this together. We're gonna, I'm going to pause it, give my opinions, give my thoughts, because I think there's uh, some very telling information in this video about the state of Star Wars and Star Wars fans, as well as the state of Disney as a whole. So let's do it. Lucasfilm continues to be a complete and total disaster, and we have the latest example of that with the Star Wars Celebration Europe 2023. If you were going to Star Wars Celebration and you were looking to talk about the Jedi, maybe you want to talk about the Empire, maybe you want to talk about Darth Vader or Yoda or Luke Skywalker, you know, all the things that Disney doesn't care about. Route right the gate, he's absolutely not wrong there. Uh, and when I say he's not wrong there, Disney doesn't care. And how do I know this? I went to Disney World this past summer. I went to the Star Wars Land in Hollywood Studios, and it was abysmal how much they did not care about the original trilogy, about the prequels. Everything was Disney-made and onward. Uh, you know, Chewbacca walked around. He was the only legacy character I saw walking around. Uh, I've heard you could see Darth Vader. I didn't see him when I was there, which is unfortunate. But uh, when I went in to, to build my lightsaber, which you'll, you'll, you'll see my lightsaber and maybe one of my thumbnails and whatnot. You know, it's this big production where you're meeting with, like, another Jedi. And they're giving you the history. And they just, they call Luke a legend and build up Rey as the greatest Jedi of all time. And how she's, you know, she, she's the end-all, be-all. Everything is modern. You go into the stores, they're all themed like modern Disney. All the rides are set in the Disney um, era, you know, the... the Hondo Onaka Rai, even though Hondo Onaka is famous for being a prequel character, it takes place during the the Resistance era, the Disney movies, the mo the you know Rai Rise of the Resistance, which is an incredible ride, mind you, it, it, it's fantastic. Despite you know it takes place during the timeline of awful movies, it is all heavily focused on the Disney timeline. It just they went out of their way to make sure that everything you see at the Star Wars world is the Disney Star Wars world, with, again, the only legacy character walking around being Chewbacca, and, of course, Chewbacca is in all three of the Disney films as well. So, it, he, he is not wrong. Disney does not care about the original Star Wars. They want Star Wars to be known as theirs, and they want to prop their Star Wars up uh, ahead of what came before it. And I, I personally find that incredibly wrong. I get Disney owns it, but they should be treating all facets of Star Wars equally, because you're going to have people from many different generations going to Disney World. You're going to have fathers that are taking their kids. You're going to have young kids. You're going to probably have, you know, couples, you know, married couples that are going there for, like, their 20-year wedding anniversary, and they're big Star Wars fans. Maybe that's how they met, was getting out of Empire Strikes, uh, you know, meet, meeting in the theater after Empire Strikes Back. Their refusal to cater to older fans is really disheartening. Let's keep going. Well, their focus is going to be a drag panel. That's right, a drag panel. Now, Star Wars, the official Star Wars account, which has shown the super wokeness on Twitter in the past, has responded to a tweet that says, the long, rich history of drag has graced the world with the entertain with entertainment culture, political action, and so much more. It is and he's not wrong. Frankly, I don't have an issue with drag. I really don't. I have an issue when drag is being around children, force on children like we've seen a whole lot of lately. Frankly, that is getting frightening. But dude, I remember when I was like 18 years old, I, I went to a drag show at a bar. Like I, I had to pay a cover, wasn't allowed to drink, had to wear a wristband. It was a lot of fun. I, I worked at a call center many years ago. I was a supervisor there. And you know, I had two employees who were who were drag, uh, drag queens. They were super cool. One of them was literally the best salesman on my team. Um... Super, super nice individual. Uh, gave them special treatment, not because of the drag, but because, you know what, when, when you make a lot of sales, you get special treatment. That's just how it goes. You know, money talks sort of thing. So, uh, by all means, got no issue with, with the drag community, or at least I didn't back then. I do have an issue with this modern interpretation of drag that uh, has children involved because drag is inherently a very sexual art form. Man, I went to a Rocky Horror Picture Show um, burlesque show one time. Awesome. Honestly, it was far more fun than the movie. I think the movie's a bit overrated, but the Rocky Horror Picture Show burlesque show I went to, it was so much fun. And, and you know, dude who was Frank and Fur absolutely killed it. So, the point is, no issue with drag, but I do have, I think everything that Disney is saying here, you know, entertainment, culture, political action, absolutely all true. Keep children out of it, and it's A-OK. -okay. 
is no wonder then that today the art form has reached such a cultural significance that the truths and the concepts of drag performance permeate countless aspects of our daily lives, including Star Wars. Here I absolutely disagree. I do not think it permeates countless aspects of our daily lives. If, if all the drag queen lifestyle, you know, shows, you know, drag events, drag queens themselves were to go away, li life wouldn't change. We'd still all be getting up in the morning. We'd still all be going to work. We'd still all be doing the daily grind. We'd still all be shuffling doubles down our gullets. Uh, so no, I would not say it permeates our daily lives. That's a whole lot of extra fluff that ought not be there if you were to ask me. And it doesn't include Star Wars. Drag has never been a big part of Star Wars. Look, I've been going to conventions my entire life, anime conventions, sci-fi conventions. Do you have people who cross-play, who do like gender-bent versions of characters and whatnot absolutely do you have people that will you know maybe they're a female and they want to dress up as a male character and will literally make themselves look like a man tape down their breasts things like that also absolutely i would say that that is not the same as drag they're not do drag is a very specific culture just dressing like a male character i'm sorry that's not, are there other maybe star wars themed drag shows yeah i'm sure they're out there they would absolutely be a small minority um and, you know just like rocky horror picture show or something to that effect I, I don't see the need here for, for Disney and for Star Wars to insist upon this very niche group. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I don't see the need for them to insist upon it because it is a very niche group. A business's whole point is to bring money in, and I don't personally see a lot of money in this when it's a very it's a minority of the population. And then it goes off on some nonsense about all of these characters and their drag as personal expression and self-discovery, drag as queer rebellion with Asajj Ventress. Uh so... I'm, I'm going to read it if he's not going to. Some of Star Wars' very best characters embody various core principles of drag, whether it's Din Djarin's drag as personal expression and self-discovery. So, Din Djarin is the Mandalorian. I, I'm, I've seen both seasons. Not really sure what they're referring to here. Whether it's Din Djarin's drag as personal expression and self-discovery. When does Din Djarin dress up in drag? I'm, I'm a bit confused by, by that portion of his backstory. Asajj Ventress's drag as queer rebellion. Again, Asajj Ventress is a female character. Where, where, where is the drag? She's a very masculine female character, uh, but you know, in, in terms of like her aggression, her anger, but that's more to, to show the viewer through a visual medium her attunement to the dark side. Again, I don't really get a drag vibe from that. I'm not sure where that's coming from. It seems like they're retroactively changing characters, which I'm absolutely not okay with. Or Padme Amidala's drag as self-empowerment. Again, pa Padme doesn't dress in drag. She may dress in like normal clothes in, in Phantom Menace because she has the queen, or, you know, she needs her decoy to act like the queen, but that's dressing in, in clothes to hide your identity. That's not drag. Drag is a very specific thing. So right to me, like, Disney Star Wars is absolutely, they're misunderstanding what drag is or worse, they're misrepresenting what drag is to kind of br bring it to their narrative so they can include it in Star Wars. Look, this is Star Wars doesn't have drag. I'm, I'm sorry. I, if, if you're drag and it sucks to hear, it sucks to hear. But it's true. Star Wars doesn't really have drag. I'm not saying it doesn't exist somewhere out there in, you know, in the galaxy far, far away. There's a lot of planets with a lot of cities with a lot of shady cantinas where a lot of not-so-nice things go on. Yeah, there's probably a drag show at the Moss Eisley Cantina now and again. Who knows? But the point is... It's not something that's been explicitly explored, or at least not in any of the pre-Disney stuff. If there's any post-Disney stuff that does explore that, well, then at that point, it's just pandering and fan fiction anyway, because Disney has destroyed Star Wars lore. Uh, pa Padme's drag as self-empowerment, the, re the relevance of drag even spills out of the pages and screens of Star Wars and flows through the fandom itself through hobbies like cosplay. See it right there. Hobbies like cosplay. Cosplay is not drag. I, I, I've cosplayed as female characters. Now, I've usually done gender-bent versions, you know, male versions of them. But, dude, if there's, if there's a character I like that's, that's female and I want to go, like, the, you know, full, actually be the female with it, I guess, you know, with, with some prosthetic tits and whatnot, maybe I'd be doing drag, but I, I wouldn't... I, cosplaying isn't drag. They're, they're similar but different things. Just like going out for Halloween is not dressing up in cosplay. You're in costume, yes, but Halloween is not cosplaying. Cosplaying isn't drag. Just because you're in an outfit that you wouldn't normally wear doesn't automatically make it drag. That's where we are with Star Wars. Now, if you had any concerns or if you were wondering, can Star Wars be saved? No, it can't. It's over. 
it's done. Now to show you where they actually respond. And here's where I disagree with him. I, I, I think the Star Wars can be saved. I don't know if it is something that will happen anytime soon. I don't know if it can happen immediately. I don't know how much time it will take, but I do think Star Wars can be saved. I think that the vast majority of things can be saved. You have shows, you have books, you have movies, you have video games that go through lulls, that go through periods of, of you know low periods in time. This especially happens in video games. Video games go through identity crises like you know Final Fantasy, it needed saved. Final Fantasy came out and it saved it. Resident Evil, it needed saved. Resident Evil 4 turned it around. Video games go through periods where a series will go on for so long, it'll try certain things, fans won't respond. Then after long periods of time, it will eventually get saved. It'll, it'll go back to what it used to be. People consider Resident Evil 7 saving the franchise, going back to horror roots after 4, 5, and 6 were action games. Um, so I, I completely disagree that Star Wars is over. I think that if Star Wars continues to exist in its current form, yeah, absolutely. But I see no reason to believe that this will be the status quo forever. Culture always changes. Times always change. For all we know, the pendulum could swing back the other way, and this stuff could all go away in the next decade. And the, the next Star Wars we get, maybe it'll be like a rated R, hyper-masculine Star Wars. To me, that still wouldn't be Star Wars. That wouldn't be saving it. My point is, what Star Wars is will change, evolve, whether that's good or that's bad. Who's to say? But to flat out say that Star Wars can't be saved... I don't know. We have, believe it or not, gotten some good Star Wars out of Disney. I said it before in, in a recent video. I'm going back. I'm, I'm replaying uh, Jedi Fallen Order to, to get geared up for uh, the, the new one coming out. And man, that, that's a Disney Star Wars product. It's also absolutely incredible. Like, it is one of the best Star, Star Wars stories. Uh, one of the best of the Disney era by far. And definitely pretty up there, even if we were to encompass... All Star Wars lore. First season Mandalorian, you know, pretty good. Rogue One, uh, pretty good. Even The Force Awakens, not entirely bad. It's definitely better than a lot of other Star Wars out there. The Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, and the modern Thrawn trilogy, that's under the Disney umbrella. Absolutely incredible. So, it, not everything from Disney is going to be bad. That's just a fact. Anyone that says that all Disney Star Wars is bad, I'm sorry. That means you, you don't know much about your Star Wars lore. Because even your modern Star Wars lore... You know, I said it was fan fiction a few minutes ago, and I only say that for the things I disagree with because, you know, I'm, I'm a biased, you know, a douche on the internet. The stuff that I like, I'm not going to say is fan fiction. You know, the Timothy Zahn Modern Thrawn books, masterpieces, just mwah. So I would not say that Star Wars is beyond saving. I hope that no true Star Wars fan believes that Star Wars is beyond saving. This is Drunk 3PO posting this. So this is the tweet right here from That Gay Jedi. Uh, I am humbled and grateful and over the forest moons to announce that my Star Wars Celebration panel uh, with these people, uh, Star Wars is a drag. Exploring Star Wars through the art of drag has been officially approved. We can't wait to share this with you all. Now, I think this is absolutely a dumb panel. I do not get why this is needed. Star Wars Celebration, like, I've been to a lot of conventions, like I said, and... Every convention's got dumb panels. I mean, you go to a convention, comic books convention, anime convention, sci-fi convention, whatever, there's going to be some panels that don't interest you, and that's fine. But every now and again, there are just some flat-out dumb panels. Like, why do they exist? Like, you go to an anime convention, and every now and again, there's a, there's going to be a panel that's about something like the eco-green friendly messages of anime. And it's like, okay, I mean, I've seen a whole lot of anime, and yeah, there might be some eco-friendly subtext in a handful of them, but can, can you really make an entire panel about an entire medium over this niche subject, or are you, are you just projecting? Like, it's probably just you projecting, and that's what this feels like. This feels like Disney projecting. There's not an insanely huge crossover between Star Wars and drag, because there's not a huge crossover between drag and anything that's massive, because drag is niche. Drag can't have anything a, a massive crossover with anything, unless it's something else that is also niche. This seems to me more like Disney just, you know, Playing to woke politics at the end of the day. This drag individual, or th this drag queen, probably asked them, "Hey, can we do this? Uh, can we do this drag event?" And Disney had to say, "Yeah," because if they said no, they would have gone to Twitter, thrown a fit, and it would have caused a, a public outcry for you know. And, and Disney would have had to bend the knee. They would have looked bad. They would have worried about their stocks. 
Or I could be completely wrong, and maybe Disney out the gate said yes because they are they're, they're an awful woke company and they think this is what will make them money. Despite all the sales of franchises, toys, movies, and everything leading up to this point being worse and worse and worse. Pinocchio didn't make any money, and no, it's not just because it went straight to streaming. Lightyear didn't make any money. That definitely didn't go straight to streaming. You know, Light Lightyear was bomb. Star Wars toys aren't selling. That has been a massive contingent. I've done a video about it on my channel, but you don't even need me to do a video on my channel to talk about how Star Wars toys aren't selling it's absolutely bananas to find out how bad star wars is in when it just comes to toys alone so no this is either complete mismanagement or fear of the woke mob either way disney doesn't know what's going on the star wars account the official star wars account right here says we can't wait to see it and then this person responds the happy tears have returned to my eyes thank you so so much now again let me put proper context to this, as I always do with my videos. Is it a problem that Lucasfilm in isolation wants to embrace different groups? No. The problem is... I agree with... I, I disagree with him there. Not for the reason you might think. It's not like an anti-drag thing or anything like that. It is a problem from a financial standpoint. From a moral standpoint, no. They, they want to include whatever groups, absolutely. Go for it. Like, like I, I, I'm down. Include whatever groups as long as... Everything is like above board, legal, isn't harming people, whatnot. Go for it. I do think it's wrong to cater to groups that aren't going to make you money and are going to, in fact, hemorrhage your business if it causes a rift. Look, I want to see Star Wars succeed, uh, and I want to see Star Wars succeed, you know, with good quality content. That isn't what's happening as of late, and it's because of moves like this. So while I get Disney and Star Wars and all of them want to bring in these, you know, what have been traditionally marginalized individuals with really these sort of fake honorary awards, these show-off events, like, look how great we are, we're having a drag event. I get for optics that looks good, but if it doesn't make you any money, or even worse, if it r makes you make less money because now you're alienating a far larger fan base, I do think it's a problem because you're not going to be able to keep making content if you're not making money. And maybe that's actually for the best. Maybe it is a great thing because maybe no new Star Wars content would actually be a blessing in the long run. We can let the series die for a while then come back as a nostalgia thing after it's been dormant for 10 years. So maybe it is good. But as it currently stands, no. I, I don't think this is a good thing. I don't think you should cater to, to groups like this if it does not benefit your business model. Is that Lucasfilm has excluded specific groups. That's the problem. Whenever you go down the rabbit hole of taking a stand and trying to reach out to certain groups, but you will alienate other groups. You will alienate other fans. You will draw the line in the sand for other fans. All right, he's correct here, but I also disagree in a sense. No matter what, if you start siding with a group, you're going to alienate another group. If you side with the gays, you're going to you know alienate the the anti gays. If you're going to if you if you side with the anti abortionists, you're going to so, you're you're going to upset those who love abortion. Like no matter what, who you side with, you're alienating somebody. That's why companies need to be apolitical. I don't want Star Wars going out and and being pro Trump. I don't want Star Wars going out and being pro conservative. I don't you know I mean I'm not conservative, so it wouldn't matter. I'm I'm, I'm firmly down the middle. The point is. I don't want Star Wars going out and supporting that side because then they're going to alienate the left and you're going to have the same problem I talked about earlier. People not paying money, people, you know, the company not making money, and therefore not being able to make quality content. So I think that Star Wars should remain purely apolitical, uh, keep, keep themselves out of anything social, and just focus on Star Wars. Focus on a galaxy far, far away because that's what we all want is the escapism. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with... He's saying that the problem is they alienate other groups while propping these up. I, I, I don't see that as a problem. I think they should effectively alienate all groups because only in alienating everybody are you really bringing everybody together. It's the Sasuke Hokage method in a nutshell. The two, the two toxic fans, the, the ones that are the bigots, the online trolls, the Russian bots, those fans, they're not allowed to be there. No, no, no. But it's okay to embrace the right kind of fan, and that's the line in the sand that Lucasfilm has continued to draw and continues to show us that they're not actually interested in Star Wars. They're interested in identity politics. They're in Here, I absolutely agree. They, they don't care about Star Wars. They care about looking good. They care about appeasing the right individuals on Twitter. They don't care about Star Wars. And I, I, I wish that we do get some. I hope we get somebody higher up in Disney that stops playing these sort of games and does actually care about these properties. If you're going to spend a gajillion dollars on a franchise that goes you know, dates back to the 70s that people absolutely love, 
don't butcher it because not not only is it upsetting us fans, yeah, whatever. You can tell us to piss off. We're gonna get our money anyway. You're a billion dollar company. You don't you don't care about the the fans throwing a fit here. But look what we fans just did to Wizards of the Coast. Don't think we can't do that to you too. If you're not worried about us, you absolutely should be. Just take a look at what happened with Wizards of the Coast. Now that might only be a temporary victory, but it's a victory nonetheless, and it's something that we can take and apply. To you at Disney. It might take longer. You're a far bigger company with a lot deeper pockets. But it can be done. And no legion of drag queens is going to keep your business afloat. I'm sorry that there's not. There's, there's not enough of them buying enough of the property. Interested in their agenda. And they're interested in people who will push their agenda. And as long as you line up with it, you are going to be welcome with open arms at Lucasfilm. But if you have an opinion that they don't want that they don't want to accept, that they don't want other people hearing, you will be cast out, you will be called a troll, you will be called a Russian bot, you will be called alt-right, you will be called all of these names that Lucasfilm has decided represents the majority of the fans that don't like the shit that they've been producing lately. So another, another disaster from Lucasfilm. Not surprising at all. Um, so shout out to Drunk3PO. He got a shout out. Shout out to Drunk3PO. Star Wars Celebration will have a drag Star Wars, drag, a Star Wars and drag panel if anyone is interested. So it's just, you know, it's not surprising. So again, if you were on the fence and look, maybe you're loving everything Disney Star Wars. And if, if that's the case, God bless you. I'm glad it's working for you. I really am. I agree with that as well, by the way. If you do love the state that Star Wars is in, if you do love the state Star Wars is in, Good for you. I truly mean that. Good for you. However, just know that you are in the minority because the the vast majority of fans do not like the state that Star Wars is in. If the vast majority liked the state Star Wars is in, Solo wouldn't have lost money, the toys would be selling, and the Disney Plus stuff would actually be making money. But it's not. So the people that keep that stuff afloat, the, you know, the main fans, the large majority... Do not like it. So if you like where Star Wars is and you like where Star Wars is going and you want to keep it that way, either start buying this stuff or acknowledge that you do not have a large enough base, you do not have a large enough group to keep that model going. And maybe, just maybe, if you like Star Wars as is, you probably like the original stuff as well. Just let the original stuff come back where everyone is happy, not just you. But again, if you like it as is, that is totally cool, and I'm happy you're able to get some sort of enjoyment that I am not. I can get enjoyment out of other stuff. I will still always have the, the original trilogy. I will still always have the prequels. I will still always have the true canon, the extended universe. I'll always have the OG Timothy Zahn books. I'll even always have some of the new Disney stuff that's still good. Man, when, the, when this is over, I might start playing some Shadows of the Empire on Steam, one of the greatest Star Wars games ever made, if not the greatest Star Wars game ever made, with the best extended universe character that isn't Thrawn, Dash Rendar. I will still have all that you guys can keep it but man i would like a future full of more stuff that i enjoy and stuff that everyone enjoys that doesn't need to pander but maybe that's asking too much it's not working for me and it's not working for a lot of people and lucasfilm has seen significant significant damage over the years the more they move into this identity politics world but if that works for you then great that's fine. Doesn't work for me, and it's not working for a lot of people. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video, and we will talk to you later. Alrighty, so that is that. That was the Geeks and Gamers uh, Star Wars and Drag video. Like I said, I agree and disagree with a lot of the points he made. A lot of the social aspect I agree with. There's that little bit I disagree with, but maybe you have an entirely different take on it. And if you do, let me know in the comments below, or let me know on Twitter where you can follow me at Bolt the Word. I think it's a discussion worth having. It's one that I would enjoy having, and I'm open to all forms of criticism, comments, sarcastic remarks, whatever you got for me. If you agree, disagree, Discourse is the only way we can move forward and make progress, so I'm happy and open to any and all of it. And if you enjoy Star Wars, check out some of my other Star Wars videos, or if you're into just nerdy things in general, I've got videos on Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, anime, you name it. It is all here in the Nerdosphere. But until next time, this has been Words of Paradise.